Today, I want to spend a few minutes thinking about Meanwhile, an amazing graphic novel by Jason Shiga. The book came out in 2010, but Shiga had worked on it for years before that. And one of the reasons it took so long is because it's essentially a choose-your-own-adventure book. You remember these books. The book addresses you in the second person, asking you to make decisions at various points in the story. The literary critic Espen Arseth has called this kind of literature, where the reader has to make non-trivial choices, ergodic literature, a word that essentially means work path, because the reader works to make his or her own path through the text. Meanwhile builds upon this mechanic exponentially. An introductory note to the book explains that the story was so complex, with so many choices for the reader, that it took a V-opt heuristic algorithm running 12 hours on a Silicon Graphics computer to optimize Shiga's intricate storylines to be presented in book form. Now, I have no idea what a V-opt heuristic algorithm is, but I do know that this is one complex book. As the directions to Meanwhile explain, each panel, and oh, that's the other difference between Meanwhile and a Choose Your Own Adventure book, it's a comic book with more pictures than text. Well, each panel is connected to another panel by a thin tube. Sometimes these tubes branch off into multiple paths, and sometimes these paths lead on to one of the 11 tabs at the edge of the book. In this case, you turn to the tab to page and follow the tube to the next panel. Here's a representative page, though not all the pages of Meanwhile are so clean. In fact, this page and the previous one are part of the same two-page spread. Now you can see what's non-trivial about the work you must do as a reader of Meanwhile to progress through the story. Some of these lines took 15 to 20 seconds for me to trace out with my finger to figure out what tab to turn to next. The story slows itself down this way, actually physically pacing the reader, which works for this part of the narrative since Jimmy, the protagonist, is agonizing over a crucial decision at this point. Shiga translates Jimmy's internal indecision into a belabored untangling for the reader. And now I want to show you Andrew Plotkin's adaptation of Meanwhile. This digital version transposes the original codex, the bound version of Shiga's story, onto a singular plane, what Scott McCloud has called the infinite canvas of the screen, which can expand boundlessly in any direction. Shiga first experimented with this kind of flat representation of Meanwhile in 2005, creating a five-foot by five-foot matrix of the entire story. Plotkin picked up this idea, creating a similar matrix for the small screen of the iPad and even smaller screen of the iPhone. Like a Mercator projection of the globe, some things are gained and some are lost with this alternate version of Meanwhile. Let's take a look. At any given time in the Meanwhile app, you can browse the map, which shows the story in its entirety, all 3,856 story possibilities in one space. You can pinch and zoom and pan across the screen. You can also see the story so far, a record of every panel you've visited, in sequence, ordered from left to right, top to bottom. You can also easily return to your last choice and go back to even earlier choices. What's interesting about this is that when you have a series of tangled lines that in the book you'd have to trace with your fingers, here you just touch the path you choose and you jump to the next point in the story. And now I want to end this overview of the Meanwhile book and Meanwhile app with this simple question. How does the digital form of Meanwhile change the experience of the book form? Not how is one better than the other, but how are they different? And what can each tell us about the other?